When DNA is replicating, it uses a semi-conservative replication method. First, the HeLa case attaches to the DNA and begins to unzip it, tearing apart the hydrogen bonds to separate the DNA into two parent strands. The enzyme DNA gyrase helps catalyze this reaction. This causes a bubble-like structure to form in the DNA. At the end of each bubble, there is a replication fork. Eventually, the bubbles will enlarge and fuse together to produce two identical daughter strands, sometimes called the new and old strands. However, this process is more complicated than that. Each strand has a different replication speed. One is called the leading strand, the other the lagging strand. Let's start with the leading strand. After the replication fork, a primer is produced by the RNA primase. The primase allows RNA nucleotides to join with the DNA bases. Single-strand binding proteins will also bind to the separated strands to stabilize them. Then the enzyme DNA polymerase 3 allows the addition of nucleotides to produce the DNA strand. DNA polymerase 1 then removes the primer and replaces it with DNA nucleotides. These nucleotides are called deoxynucleoside triphosphate, or DNTP for short, as the DNA molecule goes through phospholiperation. Energy is needed to bond, so the two phosphates are then lost. Now let's do the lagging strand. The lagging strand is assembled by Okizaki fragments, which are made up of primer primase and DNA polymerase 3. The lagging strand uses a discontinuous th synthesis. The primer adds the RNA primase to the front of the 5N. The DNA polymerase 3 adds nucleotides. The DNA polymerase 1 replaces the primer. And finally, the DNA ligase attaches the Okizaki fragments to the lagging strand. Now the DNA replication is done and ready for use. Transcription is the process in which DNA is turned into RNA so it can make proteins. Similar to the replication of DNA, it is unzipped. However, the unzipping is done by the enzyme RNA polymerase. This can only happen after the RNA polymerase combines with the DNA's promoter region. Once divided, one strand becomes a sense strand, which contains the genetic code, and the other strand is the antisense strand, which is the one that is copied during transcription. To determine which strand is which, the promoter region on the gene will determine. When the DNA opens up, it forms a bubble. The bubble contains the antisense strand and the RNA transcript and the RNA polymerase. The similar nucleotide bases are used. However, cytosine is in replace of thymine. The RNA polymerase moves towards the terminated region. Nucleotide triphosphates, or NTPs, are combining to the DNA to form messenger RNA, or mRNA. To bind the release two phosphates for energy, this process is called elongation. Each pair is always being paired up with a, its complementary pair. Once the RNA polymerase reaches the terminator region, the transcription stops and the mRNA is released. Now is translation, but before that, the mRNA now moves to the ribosome. The ribosome is composed of two subunits, the small and large, and is primarily made up of ribosal RNA, or RNA for short. Inside the large subunit has three binding sites, A, P, and E. A holds the tRNA and the next amino acid to be added to the chain. P holds the tRNA and the growing polypeptide chain, and E releases the tRNA after it's lost its amino acid. The polypeptide chain exits through a tunnel in the large ribosome subunit. They all combined to form the translation initiation complex. We've now entered the initiation phase. First, the tRNA takes a shape due to complementary bases. They form hydrogen bonds in four different areas making it resemble a three-leaf clover. Both the five and three ends are still open. An anticondin is also presented on one of the leaves so it can bind with its amino acid. It is also important to note that the three end has an ACC condon sequence so amino acids are able to bind to it. Only one specific amino acid is able to bind to the tRNA. The binding also requires energy, so ATP is used. We now enter phase two, the elongation phase. The tRNA brings amino acids to the mRNA complex and in order specified by its condons. Proteins called elongation factors assist the tRNA into binding to the mRNA at A site. The tRNA then moves to the P site where the ribosome catalyzes the formation of peptide bonds between the amino acids and creates a growing peptide chain. The tRNA is then released at E site. During this phase 3 will begin called translocation. This phase moves the tRNA to other mRNA sites. The amino acid is added to the chain the next tRNA then grabs the amino acid chain and the cycle repeats. 
Finally, phase four called termination phase begins. It begins when one of three stop condoms bind with the A site. The protein called the release factor floods the A site. This is important to know that the stop condoms have no amino acid. This catalyzes hydrolysis of the bonding linking the tRNA to the P site. The polypeptide chain is then released and the complex disassembles and the protein is now complete and it's ready for use.